So, with Marvel's Captain America Civil War out this week in America, I thought I'd have a look at what are the top rated by critics Marvel films. So, as you can see here, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is humongous and will also get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes on. So, let's have a look at the top 10. In at number 9, we had Iron Man 2, which came out in 2010 and hit the Rotten Tomatoes meter at 72%. Now, I did enjoy Iron Man 2, but it also had the issue of having the two villain problem, which most comic book sequels actually do. They have two villains for some reason. I don't know why. But I did really enjoy the film and it did go a long way to building the shield and the, the big Marvel Cinematic Universe mythos and world. So we can give it that. In at number eight, we have got Avengers Age of Ultron, which only came out last year and has a 75% rating. Now, I did enjoy this film. It did have a lot of flaws. It felt messy. It didn't have the tight structure of the original Avengers film, sadly. I felt that, really, it just didn't work as a whole. But it was a very enjoyable film. Next up, we have Thor at number 7, which came out in 2011 and at 77%. Now, I didn't really enjoy Thor all that much. I thought it was pretty boring, and I thought the whole the fact that he had to kind of work out his whole life and change uh, as he is in a matter of essentially three days. But the action was good, and the fans seemed to love it, and it did set up, again, more of the Marvel Universe. Our next film here is Iron Man 3 in 2013 and is actually my favourite Iron Man film. I liked what they did with the Mandarin, they changed it up. Guy Pearce was amazing as Audric Killian and the aftermath of the PTSD from the first Avengers film was dealt with very well in my opinion. But a lot of people didn't like the way they changed up the Mandarin, and it was hinted that he would come back again in the DVD. But I don't think that will happen anytime soon. And next up, at 80%, we've got 2011's Captain America, The First Avenger. And to date, in my opinion, it is possibly the best Marvel film to ever be made. It is a very, very good World War II drama. It was a different part of the universe because obviously it dealt with him being in World War 2 and it was really really fun to watch and Chris Evans really was great in the role as was Sebastian Stan playing Bucky as we know we all know what happened to him <laughs> so Ant-Man was one of the Marvel films which was stuck in developmental hell and really did set up the next phase for the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a very odd way, to be honest. But I think that the directors did a very, very good job in bringing this back from what could have been it meaning possibly to be cancelled. And Paul Rudd was absolutely superb. I'm a big fan of him in Friends and also the Judd Apatow films. But... Weirdly enough, this is one of the films which people go, uh, I'm not really sure, I don't really want to see it, but it turns out to be one of the best. So we have the sequel to The First Avenger. We have Captain America The Winter Soldier at 89%. And is, in my opinion, along with The First Avenger, these two are the best films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was a very good take on someone who has dealt with patriotic things and wars, etc. in a time before the internet and the global surveillance. 
and it really did deal with the kind of Edward Snowden hacking and Wikipedia leaks, etc., very, very well. So, in whole, I think it was a really, really good film. So, next up, we have got Guardians of the Galaxy at 91%. This was one of the oddest inclusions, I think, into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Guardians aren't really a big, kind of, well-known franchise or title, but they really did work well together, I think, and that is a testament to Chris Pratt, I think, holding the team together and taking up the lion's share of the screen time. It's also a pivotal role in the ongoing storyline in the Thanos story. And second from top on our list is Marvel's Avengers Assemble, or The Avengers as it was known everywhere apart from the UK, because apparently we in Britain only refer to Avengers as that hokey 60s TV show with, I think it's Diana Rigg who plays Marjorie Tyrell's mother on Game of Thrones. And there was an awful, awful, awful film in the 90s which starred Eddie Izzard for some reason. I don't know why. But Avengers was a great film. In my opinion, it wasn't the best. The Battle of New York kind of went on a bit too long. But anyway, the critics rated it at 92%, so what do I know? I'm just a guy who makes shit videos on the internet. And lastly, we have the film that started it all with Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man 1. This is a seminal piece I think you could owe out of the modern comic book movie to this film, i.e. the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the way DC are trying to up their game. This is as important as X-Men 1 and the original Spider-Man in 2000. So, it was a great, great film. So, there has been quite a few of these Marvel films now, and they don't seem to be slowing down. This one, the original Iron Man, is at 94%, and I believe that we're tracking Captain America Civil War to possibly beat it. But... As a whole of a film, it is superb. The whole dealing with the kind of prisoner of war thing at the time was very, very topical. And once again, it is topical again. So, if you like that, drop a like and subscribe for more. Goodbye.